Hajj is important, it's challenging, it challenges you spiritually, uh, challenges you physically, but there are also certain health issues that come to play, right? What therefore is your suggestions around medication? When it comes to medication, the first category of people we consider are those who are on continuous or chronic medication. The best advice for them would be to have a supply for the entire journey, number one, to keep a portion of that supply for at least the first 10 days in the carry-on luggage, and the rest they can put into their, their check-in luggage. Then coupled with that, to have both electronically as well as in a physical copy, the scripts for that medication. If the luggage is way late, then the electronic copy could be used you know, to email the pharmacist uh, in, in either Medina Tulmanawara or Makkah Tulmanawara or to be able to produce a copy. And in that manner, they'd be able to once again get a supply of the necessary medication. And, and, and I take it these pharmacists would, would have uh, the same type of medicines that we have available that we used to? In Saudi Arabia, the benefit of sourcing medication from Saudi Arabia is that you very rarely find generics. Okay. So most of the medication is actually the, the original from the ph ph pharmacological company that has actually manufactured that particular type of drug. So that's a benefit for people. Naturally, sometimes it comes at a cost. This is one category of people. The next would be people who uh, may not be on any sort of chronic medication. So to take the type of painkillers, etc., that you are normally used to and you know your body reacts well to, and not an oversupply, because an oversupply would naturally raise question marks uh, around you. Coupled to the issue of health and self-management from a health perspective, would also be giving due cognizance to a change in climate. And a change in climate would mean that more so for our mothers and our sisters, um, that you have the often occurrence of um, you know, some unsettling, unsavory experiences. And the best would be to carry uh, liners for your underclothing, so that you know, if you find yourself in an uncomfortable position, you don't always land up where your clothing or your underclothing is soiled. Mm. And this would, would allow them, naturally, giving preference to those that are unscented as liners, uh, because this allows them to navigate and use the same, same make and same supply of liners, both during days when they are in haram as well as days when they are out of haram. And, and then the, you, know, you mentioned chronic, so, so what about other medications that uh, you don't plan for, but the reality is it, it may crop up? In terms of health facilities, part of what you pay for in what's called a Hajj draft or Tenazul, there's a, an, an amount that's allotted and budgeted in there for you to use all of the medical facilities in Saudi Arabia 100% free. And that's part of the logistical planning that they do around Hajj. Beyond that, more than most Hajj missions, and that's a stipulation from the Ministry of Hajj, so Hajj missions for each and every nationality would, especially the ones that have bigger numbers, uh, you know, us in South Africa only being 2,000, we have a substantial portion of our Hajj mission being the Hajj medical mission. Mm. For bigger nationalities, Indonesia, Iran, Pakistan, India, they come with a full regiment uh, of doctors, of medical personnel, some of them carrying even uh, or having in the entourage even dentists because you'd have that oft occurrence of, you know, one out of every 100 or 200 hujjaj or potential hujjaj who have an issue with the teeth and we know that's one of the very, excuse the pun, sore points <laughs> that one could experience when one is away from home. C certainly. So, so what about the scenario when you need to be hospitalized? When you need to be hospitalized, um, the logistical arrangements are normally made through what's called the service office for your nationality. In sub-Saharan Africa, more than most countries would belong to an office that re represents uh, African pilgrims who don't speak Arab Arabic. So non-Arabic speaking African pilgrims. Uh, via that office, you would be able to gain admission into any of the Saudi health facilities and that's once again absolutely free. It's a very seamless process, just arriving there and being able to, to mention that you are someone who's here on the journey mm -hmm. of Hajj. Uh, there would be some sort of armbands, etc. that are normally given to you on arrival. In fact, in the most recent developments, uh, these are going to be printed uh, in, your, in your home country. So even before you board a plane on the journey for Hajj, you would have this armband slapped on you. And that's enough of an identification for them to be able to okay, run your admission. And, and you're saying that there's no cost to the hospitalization? No cost at all. In fact, for our mothers and sisters, it goes one step further. Sometimes, as we mentioned early on with regards to climate changes, etc., you may experience things that, are, um, that you, you're not afraid with. They have separate uh, mother and child hosp hospitals and our women folk, mothers, sisters, aunts, you know, everyone that men would serve mahram for uh, would have the opportunity of gaining admission into these specialist hospitals as well.